I don't know what the devil is trying to throw you away, but God is much bigger than we could even dream. You know, I thought about this. I, I think the devil even tries to operate under the guise of religion to get people so stuck in their view of God that they end up living this powerless life. Now, I'm not saying that all churches operate under this system because there are some really good churches out there. I'm just saying, I'm just saying this. I believe one of the biggest tactics of the enemy is to shrink God to be so small that we only view him out there somewhere. See, I think that when we shrink God down to rules and more laws and follow this and do that, that we completely miss the point of why Jesus came into this world. See, the devil isn't scared because you go to church. He's not scared because you even open your Bible. He knows the Bible. Listen, he, he's scared of you because, because once you finally see how amazing God is and how he's right there with you in it, that means, that means you can walk in who God made you, yes, you right there, to be. You know, it is a true testament of God's love for us in that he created everything with a purpose. So why would he create you without a purpose? Look, God is saying to someone right here, right now, much deeper than just a surface level worship of who you think God is. Listen, it's not based on how good you are or what you give up as much as it is about who God really is and how he never, ever fails at accomplishing his will. Listen, I know you've been struggling in trying to figure out your purpose. Maybe it's not so much about trying to find your purpose as much as it is to prepare to receive it. See, God doesn't operate under coincidence. He operates with purpose. Like every single cloud, every single blade of grass and every tree, it all serves a purpose to God's greater plan. Romans 1.20 says it like this, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. You know, to be honest, I don't see how people live without God. You know, talk about a dark life with no hope. And then it only becomes about what makes us feel good versus how we can love others in a way that glorifies the creator. Listen, I know you've been questioning everything and just want answers, but I believe God loves to operate out of that mystery. So he can literally show himself in every aspect of this life. Listen, he wants to show you his sovereignty and how he has the plan no matter where you end up. For real, for like, for real. Just take a second right here and worship God for everything around you. I mean, listen, if we didn't go through things, then how would we appreciate God's grace and mercy? So really, the quicker we can get back to worshiping him for how amazing he really is, and then within doing that, pull the rug out from underneath the enemy. So instead of clapping back at them and just trying to get another word in, just get into prayer. Just go back to that simple heart of worship. Check this out in Isaiah 29, 13. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. See, right here, Isaiah was prophesying about this very thing. The Pharisees said all the right things. They even were at every single prayer service, but their laws became their God. And it was more about human tradition that became their idol. And honestly, it was more about how good they looked and the measurement of holiness that was by human standards. I agree with the standard of morality. I would say this, that God simply wants his throne back. See, as a child of God, you can freely go to God about everything, yes, even that, and yep, that too. L listen, I don't know who this message is for, and I don't know why God is putting this on my heart, but you don't have to live up to those expectations that humans try to impose on you. See who you are for real and live life from there. Your life will never be the same. See, God knows where you need to be, but he also knows how much of a struggle it has been to stay on the right track. See, and that's where the voice of God becomes so much of a necessity. You know, sometimes we just need to turn down all that noise and take a step back. 1 Corinthians 14, 15 says it like this. What am I to do? 
I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. So when you praise God through all of that, it confuses the dark side. Because listen, you weren't supposed to make it this far. And, and you know what I'm talking about. There has been something trying to make you quit, make you stop, been putting thoughts in your mind to tell you just give up right here, but do not. But see, you have been terrifying the gates of hell with your will to fight so hard. You know, and that's what true deliverance looks like. You know, which is to worship God through every storm, through every single wave, to literally stand in awe of who he really is and to allow the praise to flow from your lips, even when it looks like all is lost. Because on the other side of that storm is the greatest blessing you could ever ask for. Colossians 3.16 says it like this, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Listen, I know you're looking at your situation and it seems impossible, but I'm telling you everything changes once you adopt that appreciation for where you are at. Listen, I know you want to look so far into the future and plan everything out, but it's going to happen like this, step by step, day by day, and then things will slowly start to get better. It may not happen in your timing, and it may not even look how you want it to, but just know this, God's got you right here for a purpose. And listen, 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 he won't let you fall right here. He won't let you fail right here, and he's not going to let you go. And listen, he's been watching over you this whole time. Check this out in Revelation 4.11. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. All right, come here. Come here. Bring it in. Let's hug it out for a second. Let's hug it out. Listen, he didn't bring you this far just to leave you now. Listen, he's all around you. He's in your breath. He's in the air. He's watching over you. He wants you to just step out in faith and watch how God comes through every single time. So I want to say this, you got this and you can't give up right here. You got so much more ahead of you and there is nothing, I mean nothing that can stop God's plan for your life. So right now, right now, God, I ask that you would lay your hand on my friend right here. And Lord, I pray peace over your mind. And I speak to that hopelessness to be made right in God's eyes. Step out of your comfort zone and trust and trust that God's got the plan and he is all sovereign. Jesus mighty name. Amen. So think about Abraham for a second. Listen, he got a word from God and told him to leave and go to the land that he would show him. And see, when Abraham left, he wasn't sure of all the details and he didn't even question it. But see, he knew God's voice and he knew what to listen for. But that's not some superpower that is taught. It is from literally spending time with the creator of all things. See, if Abraham would have choked out and not have gone, then the rest of the story wouldn't make sense. But see, Abraham didn't even realize that one day he would have a kid. He was just listening to the voice of God, which is showing us that nothing is impossible for the God of the universe. Genesis 22, 10 through 12 shows us this. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld your son, your only son. So now, so now, right here, you know what you got to do. Maybe it's time to break free from all those religious mindsets, from all that monotony. And listen, you're doing great and your greatest days are ahead of you. While it may not make sense right now, find it in your heart right here, right now to just begin praising God no matter what, no matter where you find yourself, no matter what you're up against. Here at the end of this video, type this, say, God, here I am. So much, I'll see you on the next one.